Okay, let's do this. Go ahead, take them off. Security call to Elk River, getting underway from Buckeye Bayonne. Be uh, bound over to uh, Stapleton. We're all gone? Yeah, say again. Okay, are we off on the stern at all? Yeah, about five on the stern, a couple inches on the bow. Very good. Okay, so the problem here is that the tide's going this way and it's setting me down. So I've already set up the stern, so I'm five feet off. I'm coming back, but the but the tide's going to grab the tug and push it this way. Yeah, and about 15 feet of coverage on the floor pad. All right, very good. So. Five wide, on, five wide on the stern hold. Very good. So I'm just coming ahead a little bit with the rudder hard over the port. So that's kind of twisting four against it. Four wide. Very good. All right. So we're almost halfway out of the slip right now. So I can start easing my rudder, going all stop, and then backing on both engines. The tide's going to grab my stern and start lifting my bow off instead of crashing my bow in because I'm past the pivot point already. See, now the bow is opening instead of falling in there, so that's a good deal. I've got my rudder straight back. We're coming back hooked up stern, doing 3.7 right now. Now, I've got a lot of traffic. I've got inbound traffic, outbound traffic, so I'm trying to come out of here real quick. All clear on the port side, all clear. Very good, good job. We'll call it uh, 0815 underway. 0815. Okay, we're going five knots astern. I'm going to go all stop, set my rudder up to the hard starboard, and uh, give the just clutch a head in here on both engines. Once they grab, now, because I'm coming back here, a good clip here, I'm going to hook up both engines hard over to the starboard to try to get this thing swinging, because I've got an inbound ship that's going to be looking for me. Laguna from the Elk River. NS Laguna, Elk River. Alright, well at least I can say I called her. Alright, so she's moving pretty good. I'm going to straighten out my rudder now. And I'm going to get over to the green side, so over to the right side of the channel here. Since I wasn't able to make contact with the pilot there, um, I'm getting over to the green side to assume that I'm going to see him on one. It looks like he's left me enough room to do that. So I want to do that as well. I'll take you Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to call up now. Yes, sir. I'll see you in two. On two. NS Laguna from the Elk River. Yeah, Cap, just got underway from Buckeye here. Uh, I'll see you on the one. I'll still hold it tight to the greens for you. Okay, 
from the Elk River underway at this time. Elk River traffic, Roger, Laguna on the Conic Range, followed by the Andrea and the SCF Heritage is at approaching 26 also in that. Very good, thank you. All right. So, now we kind of relax. Everything's cool. Got out of there before the other guy snuck up behind me. So, welcome. I'm Tim and this is Tim VSC. And uh, as you saw, we are getting underway from one of the docks over in the Kills here in uh, New York. We're headed out, and we're going to head out and kind of hang out for a little while because the ship we're waiting for is underway, but he isn't up here yet. So he was down on the other side of the Kills, and he's going to go out and around and come out and anchor, and then we're going to, uh, then we'll give him uh, bunkers. But in the meantime. It's a beautiful day here, coming out the Conhook Range. There's the ship we were just talking to, and like I say, he left us plenty of room, so when we defaulted to one whistle, it worked out just perfect. You can see on the right-hand side the uh, Staten Island Ferry going over there. Now normally I'd be crawling along because I got to kill time anyway, but because we're in a very uh, busy part of the kills here, well all the kills is pretty busy, but because we've got inbound ships and inbound tugs and tows and outbound and all kinds of stuff, I'm going to keep it rolling until I get by the ferry docks, and after that then I'll slow down and kill time. But it's best not to loiter in heavy traffic, right? <laughs> The Elk River from the SCF Elk River, good morning. Yeah, what ship are you guys going to? The uh, something Spruce. Elena Spruce or something like that? Oh, Alondra Spruce. She's transporting up Chapel Hill now. Um, you're going to Bay Ridge? Yeah, I was just going to try to stay out of everyone's way. What can I do to help you until he gets up here? Can I call Captain Fred Rupp-Lapp? Can I call Bridge? Yeah, kind of kill if you want to stay. Yeah. 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 if you want to cut over to the, uh, towards the KV buoy, I'll see you on two. Okay, very good. That's a plan. I'll see you on two whistles. Thanks for coming in, Cap. All right. The Alondra Spruce call the, uh, tough the Alondra Spruce. Good morning, Cap. It's the Tug Elk River. I'm the mighty Elk River. Good morning. <laughs> We're going to be taking the bottommost spot in Bay Ridge, probably be up there around 9.30 or so. Port side of the ship, if possible. You got it, Cap. We'll see you there. Very good. Thank you so much. Yep. All right. Yeah, got to love that. He uh, told me I only got an hour to kill. I thought I was going to have to kill a couple hours. told me what side of the ship. So we'll go starboard side, too, to his port side. And uh, that's going to work out great. The uh, inbound ship here that was concerned, he's still way off there, but uh, he and I've made a plan, so that's not going to be an issue. If you look here on the chart plotter, this is the guy that originally called me, and he's coming down my way like this. And so he told me to aim off here. This is the KV buoy right here. For killed Van Cole. And... Uh, so I'm going to head this way, and he's going to see me. Instead of on one whistle, he's going to see me on two. So he's going to see me starboard to starboard pass as he comes in here. And I'm going to go over here to the lower part of the Bay Ridge anchorage right here and wait for my ship to come in. Anyway, that ought to do it. Uh, I'll try to turn this, if I can remember. It's getting harder and harder to remember as I get older. <laughs> uh, if I remember, I'll turn on uh, the cameras when the ship gets up here, and I'll see you then. So we're back. And the ship we're going to is anchored 
the tide runs this way, and he's anchored like this. So I, I'm suspecting that he's going to be coming, that he's going to be swinging stern at me. To add to the confusion, there's a small boat that's probably dropping off ship stores, you know, like food and supplies and stuff like that. And he seems to be right on the same side as the ship has asked me for, uh, asked me to get alongside him. So uh, when I was talking to the pilots, they told me to come along their port side, which means I'll be going starboard side too. But uh, since then, I haven't heard from the pilots, and I've tried to call the ship, and nobody's been talking to me. Now, if you can see, the ship is just coming into frame on the port side there. Yes, sir, Captain. I'll see you on two. Okay, very well. Do it. All right, Dalton. We're getting close. So my plan, my plan is to get up where uh, that little boat that's in the way really isn't in the way because he's back underneath the rake. So I'm gonna, being a tanker, I think the connection is gonna is gonna be in the middle of the ship. So I should be able to land up on the flat of the ship without any trouble at all. So that's what I'm hoping for anyway. So here we go. tugboat coming out of the Conhook range was just calling another tugboat saying, hey look, I'm loaded up. I can't really do anything, but there's some people ahead of me that are waving an orange light shack at me. So another tug went to go see what the problem was and traffic is just calling the original tug asking for a description. And you can see, I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not. Let me turn this down a little bit. But uh, you can see one lift is going up on the ship right now, right, of stores. So. Yeah, I got you, Lima Charlie. That's correct. A uh, little boat right there looks like he's in the way. Since he's in the rake there, I don't think it's an issue because I think our connection is going to be right in the center of the ship, right on the flat. So I'm going to drive right up there. We'll get a couple lines in the bow and fall back. The hardest part of doing these jobs right here is right now we're approaching the ship and I'm doing 4.3 which is probably a little faster than I should go so I just pulled it back to clutch. Um, the problem with coming in too fast is that I don't have the ability to stop or slow the barge so uh, what I'm doing is slowing down now and because the distances are greater, meaning you don't have a lot of other things for reference. It looks just like a small ship and I can go flying up on there when actually it's a really big ship and you're like, oh my god, it's going to take me forever to get there. <laughs> so the, so sometimes you really want to keep the power going, but then when you get up to the ship, <laughs> you find yourself running out of stopping power. So we're coming down to 3.8 knots, 3.7 now. So it's it's slowing down all the time. Now normally when I come into a dock, I usually want a spring line that I can work into that will hold the bow in. But this is one of the the rare occasions when you're doing a ship at anchor. You can't, you know, it, you don't really want to work on the ship that much because it's at anchor. So what you do is you put up bow lines and let the tide, let the current pull you back into those lines. You know, sometimes it'll help it out with a little bit of uh, reverse as well. Antonio! Hello, yeah. 
Yes, say again? We're abreast of the start of the ship now, another 50 ahead, we'll be abreast of the flat. Very good, thank you. Yeah, all right, so we're down to 3-2. Yeah, I'm going to go all stop and just coast in from here. The main channel here, but um, they're pulling the anchor now. It looks like the, uh, the other boat's set. I'm going to go abreast of the flat of the ship now, 80 wide, coming into 70. 80 coming into 70. So now I've put my rudder hard over, and I'm going to start twisting right now because... Even though we're 70 feet oh, off. Oh, that's great. Good deal. So he says if there's somebody walking. Yeah, I can see the guy in the red there walking up with the heaving line. So the ship obviously knows that we're coming. And the reason why I'm pulling this out is, as you can see, I'm, I'm pulling the bow out, but we're uh, getting close, and it's a heavy barge. All right, very good. Now I've gone all stop just to let everything settle down for a little bit. Thirty-five wide, down, coming into thirty. Beautiful. So I still have my rudder hard over, so I can pop. Oh, that bow. Thirty that, on the bow, coming in twenty-five. And that bow is really not going to pop, so I'm just going to put it in clutch right now and give it a start it moving that way. Twenty on the bow. I want to get the bow over 15. there, but. I don't want to crash into the ship either. Now, into 12. Because like I was saying, uh, she's heavy and it doesn't really snap. Coming into 8, 30 on the stern. Close. Okay, now I'll go, I'll stop. 8 on the down, 25 on the stern, coming into 20. Now he said 8 twice, that means I was able to get the stern to move. Holding the bow. Well, it came Coming into 6. Coming into 40 feet ahead, we'll be abreast of those trucks we're going to use for our front lines. So I st straighten out my rudder and drive ahead. Very good. He said, we had on the bow, 15 on the he said we had to come ahead 40 feet. Uh, 20 ahead for the charge. 20 feet ahead. So now, now what I'm going to do is I have my rudder set up. Bow, on the Actually, I'm just, just going to set it up to bring yeah, it up. Bow, coming up to the charge now. We can take off our headway. Very good. Putting the brakes on. Now, I originally had my uh, Five on the bow, the rudder hard over thinking that I'd have to pull the bow over, but the bow was coming over so well I just straightened it out and just stopped our forward movement. Coming right underneath these jaws, too wide on the bow, four on the stern. Very good. I'm getting my casting lines up to them now. We'll send them over, one will be on the cast and one will be on the dolphin base. Very good, perfect. That is a dialed in AB. Perfect, uh, gave me perfect distances, all the information I needed. And, uh, uh, we'll probably work on the one going on the double bit, we'll probably keep it pretty short. Uh, just about a breast line now, as soon as they get it secure, we'll wrap it up, see how it looks. Very good. Yeah, well, uh, maybe bring it ahead down to 5 10 feet, we'll keep it as short as we can. Coming ahead 5 or 10 feet. Is that it? Yeah, we're going to put one more up on the cast and we're just going to check our spot here. We'll work on this one we got here on the bench. Very good. I think it's like our way now. I'm turning to a back at least. Just a little bit of slack in. Back in line just about coming tight now. We're just going to check our spot. Very good. This gives me a chance to check out, of, out with traffic. Traffic from the Elk River. Elk River traffic. We're all secure uh, ship side, lower end of Bay Ridge. Elk River traffic. Roger, Cap, check out. Thank you, you too. Traffic is in 
All right. We're going to our spot here, Tim. We'll get tied up. Very good. All right. So that's about it. Tying this thing up. Like I say, that's kind of the boring part. So you guys uh, hung in there to the end. Good for you. Give yourself a big old thumbs up. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, you guys. And uh, stay safe out there. And I'll see you on the line.